Hello everyone, today I'm going to tell you about my top 5 time-saving reef upgrades. Hello everyone and welcome back to Amra Azul TV. Here's a video of my Red Sea Reefer 250 when it was just about 3 months old, so about uh, 4 years ago. And I was really excited when I got this tank. Uh, previously, I had like a, a, a breed, a, I think a 20 gallon breeder and it was uh, just kind of getting getting my feet wet, uh, so to speak. And I was super excited when I got the Red Sea Reefer where it had a sump, I could actually use like a skimmer. Uh, I could use all of these uh, cool reactors. And uh, I finally had like space to uh, grow and lights to grow Acropora. Uh, and I managed the tank uh, uh, effectively like manually for the first uh, year or so. Uh, so everything was done manually. There was uh, like zero automation. And you know, the, uh, things, things were, were okay. It, there was, I think you can run a tank without any fancy automation. Uh, but just, uh, I, you know, I have uh, a busy schedule with work. Uh, I have a family and, and you don't always wanna spend <laughs> all of your free time looking after uh, your tank. So over the years, I've invested in kind of several uh, systems, uh, upgrades to the Red Sea Reefer uh, that I found to be uh, really awesome in terms of uh, saving me time and allowing me to focus on, on the more uh, enjoyable aspects of, uh, of keeping a reef, like watching corals grow, documenting uh, things, um, and, uh, and, uh, and fragging corals when, when they get large. So this video is gonna be about my favorite five reef upgrades, uh, upgrades that I implemented that I found were really effective in terms of saving me time and making the tank run more efficient and smoothly. So my first tip is to expand your top off reservoir. Uh, my RODI system is located in the basement of uh, my house right underneath the laundry top and when I first purchased the Red Sea Reefer 250 it did come with a stock uh, ATO uh, reservoir that held I think about 1.5 to 2 gallons that only lasted about two and a half days and it was really awkward to refill so I would literally have to get like a two cup two cups of water in a measuring container and pour it into the reservoir often I would end up spilling. So the first upgrade to the reservoir uh, over the Red Sea Reefer stock reservoir was uh, I essentially used a five gallon bucket. Uh, I drilled a hole through it and I put my uh, uh, Tunzi Osmolator, the pump in there. And now you know, I went from like two gallons to five gallons. So this was better uh, in a sense that now I was only filling my reservoir every four days. But still, I had to like fill these five gallon containers in my uh, laundry top uh, with my ROIDI system, uh, literally like every four days. And I had to carry them up the stairs, uh, install them in the tank. I had two of these, so I was able to kind of like swap them around. And it was just like every every four days, I would have to carry this uh, big heavy thing. And you know, sometimes when I'm filling them. Uh, uh, I would splash a little bit of water. It wasn't a big deal, but uh, it's just it wasn't ideal. I, I, I wanted to come up with uh, uh, a long a longer term solution. So after some hesitation, I finally got my drill and I uh, made a small little hole in my subfloor right uh, underneath my tank, well uh, behind my tank, and I was able to run the lines of the Tanzi Osmolator uh, from my tank down to a 50 gallon uh, brute container and the 50 gallon brute was connected to my RODI system with a float valve. So now for my uh, top off, all I have to do is turn on my RODI system. It will automatically fill my 50 gallon reservoir and the Tanzi Osmolator pump, and I can't say enough good things about this pump, it is able to pump water from my basement 12 feet above to deliver it to my tank. I think it can actually do 14 feet uh, uh, if you set the Tanzi Osmolator to max. So now uh, I'm able to uh, go for, I think, four weeks at a time without having to uh, refill uh, this reservoir. And even then, it's just uh, as simple as turning the tap. So uh, uh, I find this system to be really efficient and it saved me a ton of time and a lot of like uh, bag issues having uh, to carry these uh, five gallon containers up and down every four days. All right, keeping uh, with the theme of avoiding having to carry buckets of salt water up and down the stairs, uh, my second tip is to try to automate your water changes. So previously, I would carry a five gallon uh, salt water uh, bucket uh, up uh, my stairs every weekend to do my uh, water changes. 
Uh, the process, I think, took about uh, 20 minutes or so uh, every weekend. The family weren't uh, too happy about it. So now I have this 50-gallon uh, uh, container full of salt water, and I have this uh, dosing tube. And I'm, I do. There's many ways to do automatic water changes, but I'm accomplishing it with uh, uh, by effectively dosing water using an Apex dose. And so uh, water from the new salt water uh, mix goes up to the tank. And then I have another tube that's in the sump that takes dirty water from the tank and pumps it out into uh, my laundry sink. Uh, so I do two liter uh, daily water changes now. I think that helps in kind of stability of the tank, but I, again, it saves you a lot of time and a lot of effort lugging uh, buckets of salt water up and down from the basement. All right, uh, tip number three is a fairly obvious one. It's an automatic feeder. Uh, so I do have uh, lots of fish, lots of wrasses. Wrasses like to eat uh, many meals uh, throughout the day. Uh, so I typically feed my uh, fish four times. Uh, once in the morning, frozen uh, manually. And the other three, I use my automatic uh, Eheim feeder. And uh, I, I think uh, automatic feeders are, are really a great way to kind of uh, save time and to kind of feed in a more consistent manner, right? You're always metering uh, a similar number of pellets uh, at, at uh, specific times during the day. I think that helps kind of uh, get the fish uh, uh, on a schedule. And obviously, if you ever go away on vacation, you're gonna need uh, somebody to uh, feed your fish. And uh, yes, it's nice to have a neighbor drop by and, and feed every now and then. But again, if, if you do it with an automatic feeder, things are just gonna be much more consistent. Uh, so I really like the Eheim uh, auto feeder. Uh, it runs, I think, on maybe two uh, uh, AA batteries, and I haven't had to change the batteries on these since I bought the machine, I think maybe four years ago. So uh, really good investments, will save you lots of time and will keep the fish, uh, keep your fish happy and, and fed. All right, my fourth uh, tip is uh, get a tank controller. And okay, so th this is gonna be a bit of a controversial topic and I'm not in any way endorsing Apex here. Uh, if you follow the channel, you, you know that, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with my Apex system. Uh, but I think an aquarium controller gives you a lot of information, like the most basic types will will uh, will provide you with information on like pH and temperature, uh, so it acts as a tank monitor. Uh, but then you could get really fancy, and then you could start to kind of program things and and being able to effectively change the behavior and look of your tank uh, by pressing some buttons on an app. Uh, so I, I will say that. Yes, I would like my uh, controllers to be a little bit more robust and, and certainly there's a lot of room for improvement, but I, I just can't think of uh, uh, running a tank with a, a controller just to kind of get the information on, on uh, basic water chemistry and be able to kind of turn on and off things at the click of a button. Uh, I don't think I would uh, ever been able to go on like long vacations without having uh, a good controller. So. Uh, I think, I think if you have one, you can run a tank without a controller, but having a controller will, will make things a little bit easier. Uh, you just you know, have to get a good one that doesn't crash and kill your tank. <laughs> All right, my last tip is about uh, getting a system that does automatic uh, water uh, parameter testing. So uh, there are many systems on the market uh, that uh, are able to test uh, alkalinity, and uh, I think there's some newer ones that are uh, able to test a whole bunch of other things like uh, calcium, magnesium, uh, nitrates, and phosphates. Uh, the system that I happened to get uh, was the Trident from Apex. It uh, tests uh, alkalinity, calcium, uh, and magnesium. And uh, I found this to be a, a, a good time saver. So previously, uh, after I do my half an hour water change on the weekend, I would spend another 20, uh, 30 minutes testing calcium, uh, magnesium, uh, uh, alkalinity, nitrates, and phosphates. So it, it meant that I was uh, every weekend just spending an hour doing water changes and, and testing my, uh, my water. So ever since I got the Trident, I, I no longer do my uh, half an hour regimen for testing for core parameters because I could just see them on the Apex. Uh, and I only test now for uh, nitrates occasionally if, if the tank is looking a little bit weird. Uh, knowing your alkalinity level uh, that allows you to then automatically adjust your dosing and to keep your alkalinity stable, which I think is a, a really big positive. So I, I'm certainly a big fan of uh, automatic water testing. Obviously, uh, the kit is a little bit more expensive and uh, uh, it may be not available in some regions yet, uh, but it has certainly uh, been helpful. It allowed me to kind of get uh, some new information, uh, get a better feel for my tank. Uh, uh, so uh, I found it really useful. 
All right, that's it. Uh, please let me know what you think. If, uh, <laughs> if you're running all of these five systems or maybe one or two, uh, do write back in the comments and, and let me know. And if I missed any kind of critical uh, bit of equipment that uh, saves you time in keeping your reef, then uh, please let me know as well. All right, everyone, uh, thank you so much and uh, see you next week.